Hi guys, welcome back to another video in this channel. Today we're gonna start. Sorry, I got stuck there again. Uh, I always get stu uh, stuck in the in the intros for some reason. I, I guess you guys make me nervous or something. So <laughs> today we're gonna start with the treasure chest. We're gonna be doing a very nice treasure chest. Let me show you the concept. I was looking through some of the elements and remember this is a mini project. So we're gonna try to finish this in three sessions. Um, hopefully three sessions. I, I don't want to say or less, but uh, three sessions should be good. So I was looking for some concept arts and some of them look pretty pretty cool. But I really like this one and I think it's a really nice beginner and even intermediate level a uh, prop that people can um really attempt and 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 do a great stuff or great stuff with it so this is actually a toy you can see here chest figure so we're going to use this toy as an inspiration and we're actually going to create our own like realistic version of it uh, i'm still thinking whether to do it realistic or do it stylized uh, so i'm gonna let that decision go to you guys if you guys want me to do it like sort of like this cartoonish style like flat maybe use a little bit of the tablet and paint uh, a little bit more hand painted texture uh, we can try that as well. So yeah, let's go. I'm already downloaded that image. You can just look if you wanted that, that find that image. You can just look for treasure chest real, and it's one of the first options that I got, like right about there, I think. Uh, where is it? It's like the four. There's this one right here. So it should be like fairly fairly close in the first results. If not, let me know and I'll, I'll upload it for you guys and, and, and we can all work on this one as well. So I'm gonna go to my front view. We of course need to make sure that our project is set. Uh, which I think we did set the project because we're working on the um, lighthouse. So let's go here to names and next to live. There we go. And uh, yeah, now the project set. Now that we're in front view, we're going to go view image plane and we're going to say import image. And before we continue, let me turn on the card next so that you guys can see the keystrokes as well. And we're going to look for the treasure chest. There we go. And this is going to be on our front view. Now, uh, we don't have the exact measurements of this thing, so I'm going to say that this is like about a meter wide, so it should be like about this or something. Um, so I'm going to create a box right here. Oop. Create a box. There we go. And I'm going to change the options here to 100. So that's roughly what the chest should uh, measure. Where's my cube? Hmm, weird. My mouse is acting a little bit weird, so. Oh, it's the number five. There we go. I feel, oh, it's this thing. <laughs> I was using my, my glove and it felt like not smooth at all. So there we go. By the way, uh, big news. We are, uh, we started with the, um, with the moving. I, I mentioned that we were going to uh, change places. My wife and I are moving to a different apartment. Uh, it's pretty much in the same complex, uh, but we just have to move everything like back and forth. So I'm also going to be changing the studio here. So you're going to see a different setup in probably by the end of next week. Um, just keeping you guys up to date because we might skip a couple of days depending on how difficult the transition is, depending on the internet and all that stuff. Uh, but there we go. So yeah, that's a, a one meter cube and that's roughly how big I want the chest to be. Now let's start by doing the base. Now, as you can see, this chest is actually in perspective, right? So here's where a little bit of perspective tricks come into place. I know that this is the lowest point right here. So that means that this lowest point right here would be uh, exactly in the same place, right? And if I take the cube, for instance, where's the cube? There's the cube. And I grab the upper vertices, the highest point of the first section of the chest is going to be this one, right? Because we're following this corner right here. So that's, that's the size of the chest. If we were to grab like this cube right here and rotate it, like in perspective, we should be able to find like the exact same size as you can see there, uh, but we're not going to do that. Also on the width right here, we're also going to make it a little bit shorter. So again, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like guesstimating how, how thick or thin this thing is. It's probably a little bit more here and you can see that it kind of like tapers out. So I'm going to grab this face and push it forward like this. Now, it is really important that we do this in two pieces because eventually I would like this chest to be able to be open, right? So, so I'm, I'm doing this right here. Now, if I want to create thickness, if I want to create the inside of the chest, um, we are going to grab this face right here. And there, there's a couple of ways to do it. I'm actually going to do it a very weird way. I'm going to grab the whole object. I'm going to extrude it. And I'm going to extrude it inwards like this. And you can see that we're creating like a volume there, which is the inner volume. I think something like that should be more than enough. And then I'm going to grab this face right here, delete it. And this face right here and delete it as well. And you're going to see that we've created the like the inner side and the outer side. However, the normals are uh, flipped. So it's very important that we go mesh display and go into a reverse so that we reverse the normal uh, uh, angles. I'm going to grab this edge and with my uh, V key, I'm going to snap it to this point so that they're in the exact same level, right? So we're pretty much leveling. And now we just grab this guy and this guy. We mirror. 
um, uh, bridge, sorry. We bridge and there we go. So now we've pretty much created like the inside and the outside of our box, which looks pretty cool, I would say. Now let's create the little, um, what's the word, the cap of the whole thing, right? And for the cap, we also have a rough estimate of the elements. So I'm actually gonna duplicate the bottom box here. I'm gonna rotate this 180 degrees. Let's move the pivot point with D and V to the base of the box and then V and snap it down here. And actually, I mean, again, it, it's pretty symmetrical. It seems to be a little bit shorter. So I'm just gonna scale this down just a tad bit like that. And we need to create this sort of shape. And again, there's a lot of different ways to do it. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna insert a couple of edge loops here. I'm actually gonna go into mesh tools, insert edge loop, and we're gonna insert multiple edge loops, let's say five. There we go. Now, if I were to go to the right view, I should be able to move like all of these vertices like down, push them forward, and then grab these guys like here. Make sure that we're grabbing the inside as well. Bring them down, push them out, and then this one's right here. Bring them down, push them out a little bit. There we go. I think I can grab this guy right here, like all of this edge loop and bevel it. I'm gonna give it two fractions so that we get, or smaller fraction and two segments. So I get, we get this roundness. Now if you wanna be like super exact here, we can like grab this one. I'm actually just gonna focus on one of the halves here. So grab this one. There we go, now see how the thickness changed a little bit. I'm just gonna guesstimate the general thickness. No need to be perfect here because like you're not gonna be seeing both sides at the same time any, any at any point. There we go. But the important thing is that we are getting like that sort of like chest look, which is right, this one right here. It seems to be a little bit uh, wider on the, on the side here. So I'm gonna grab all of these guys. Let's go to the right view again. So grab all of these guys, even though they're not symmetrical anymore, just push this. Maybe grab these guys and push them a little bit higher. There we go. Now to make sure that this is symmetrical, we can just grab the whole object, press shift, right click, and then go into mirror. And we're gonna mirror this on world C negative. So it goes back to the to the axis. And there we go. So that's the the lid of our chest uh, very nicely. I, I think it's it's working good. Now, one thing that we can already do here, oh, hoo -hoo, careful there, see that? Little line there. I mean, it's not great, but we can just like control delete those guys and there we go. So what we can do here is we can actually go to the right view and move the pivot point to the like point here so that when we rotate this, this thing open, actually we need to move it to the back, right? Where like the hinge would be so that when we open the chest, we're gonna get this. And as you can see, things are looking nice. So I like it. We're in, we're in a very good position. I'm gonna save real quick. Let's save this as uh, treasure chest. And uh, we can actually use this treasure chest on the lighthouse, I think, if we do it realistically. If we do it stylized, then uh, uh, that's a no-go. So uh, let's talk about uh, these things right here. As you can see, the box right here has some sort of like metal reinforcement, and there's an extra reinforcement up top of that metal. So should be fairly easy to do. I'm going to show you how. The first thing we can do is we could, of course, bevel, but I'm actually going to freeze the transformations here. The late history, first transformation. I'm gonna duplicate this guy and move it to the front so that we can work without actually worrying about this one. And I'm actually gonna insert a couple of fetch loops. So I'm gonna do it like, like about there, like 95% roughly. And same thing here, like, like right about there. Now I know that this corner right here is gonna be the exact same corner as that one right there. So the only thing I need to do is literally grab like that edge right there that we just created, all of that, and then shift select and delete everything, and there we go. It's just a matter of grabbing this guy and this guy, we bridge, this guy and this guy, we bridge, this guy and this guy, we bridge, this guy and this guy, we bridge. Uh, if we wanna make this thing even like more exact, we can just grab like the lower faces and snap them together so they're perfectly flat. And there we go, that's our that's our support edge. So uh, here's where we're gonna have to make a decision which we haven't made just yet, which is are we gonna do this for like a game or are we gonna do this for a cinematic? I think it's gonna be for a game, so I'm gonna keep it low poly, uh, which means that in this case, I'm just gonna grab like this face, like push it out a little bit. Maybe grab like this vertices right here, bring them up, just on this guy, there we go. Bring them down, like snap them down here, there we go. So as long as there's like a little bit of a gap, that's gonna help with the, um, what's the word? 
with the ambient occlusion and stuff. I'm actually going to grab like both of these guys right here. And usually, usually you want to have even just the slightest thing like that. Some, something like that. I, I think it helps uh, just again to, to kind of solve the whole thing. So for this one, to, to give it a little bit more geometry without actually going overboard, we're just going to bevel the whole thing. We're going to have like two segments and a small fraction. So as you can see, that's going to give me a round effect without really uh, like affecting the um, the poly count of the whole thing. And that's going to give me that nice little like dirt and the impute occlusion thing on the on the little sides. So I'm going to grab this guy right here and I'm going to press shift, right click, mirror. We're going to mirror this to negative C world. And there we go. We have it back here. And then we're going to do the same thing, but this is going to be negative X. OK, apply and boom, we have the four corners of our uh, like reinforce uh, 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 What's the word? <laughs> Treasure box. So we're going to do the same thing. I'm just going to control D, duplicate this guy around. I am going to add or create a new edge loop like down here, which is going to be like my support down there. And then we can just select like that whole loop, deselect everything else. So we just get this little corner here. Control E, push it forward. Uh, in this case, I'm actually going to go R and just going to push it with this little element right here because I want to keep this like completely flat. So I'm going to grab all of the top faces and, and flatten them up. And I'm going to lower uh, grab the, all of the lower faces and flatten them up as well. Grab the whole thing. We're going to bevel two segments and a small fraction. And now it's just a matter of bringing this back to the origin like this. Now, as you can see on the concept, this one's actually beneath the other ones. So very, very important that we modify some of the of the sizes here. So this one's definitely going to go like there and like there. There we go. So as you can see, we have that nice, very nice. Like those, all of those angles are really, really good because they're going to help us create this very nice, uh, again, dirt and stuff. Now here, I'm also going to, um, I'm wondering what to do here. I think I'm going to push this slightly lower. Just said so this one sits a little bit lower on the ground and then we have like the wood, maybe even a little bit lower. So this is going to be like the base of the of the chest, what, what's actually like touching the ground, right? So not the wood, but rather this sort of like metal effect. There we go. Now, as you can see, we have this very nice little like, I don't know how to call them. I'm not a, a blacksmith, so I'm not sure what the proper name for those things are. Um, but it's this like sort of support. But before that, we do have this like very similar effect or very similar to this one, but up here. Same deal. Just grab this guy, move it to the side. Let's create like a nice little line here. So like this one right here, shift select so that we only get this one. I'm actually gonna, uh, before we do the extrusion, I'm gonna bring it back uh, to here. Now it seems like I move a couple of things. So let's, we should zero everything out. Oh, except that one, like this one's let's zero them out. There seems to be like some sort of like weird movement there. There we go. So that's the guy we want. We control E and we move it forward. In this case, I am gonna extrude. I think that should do just fine. Make sure that we're not like pushing things like way more than we want. We're going to bevel and same deal. So that's two segments and a small fraction. There we go. And perfect. So yeah, so we have all of the supports for our chest uh, ready on this like outside things. Now we need those little things right there and they're a little bit tricky. Now we are going to be able to do as long as we do like one and two, we should be fine. Um, so how can we do that? Well, I know that they're very similar to the shape of the box. So we can actually, again, take this box. So control D, let's move it to the side and, and sort of like create the, the basis for them. So I'm going to do like this, this, and this. And I know that it's this sort of like 90 degree angle. So, so like this guy's right here. And this guy's right here, right? So pretty similar. I think this line, though, one of them is a little bit too big. So oh, let's move it again. Let's try to get like a nice. That's ninety-five percent, and that's like five percent. No, a little bit more. I want it to be a little bit more like similar. There we go. So again, we grab this sort of like angle that we have right here, and this one. Shift select, delete, and boom, we have the, the little like supports that we want. So now I know that if I were to extrude these guys and extrude them forward and press number three, we are going to get those sort of shapes, like the sort of like uh, thingies that <laughs> hug the little surfaces, right? However, if we really check this, guys, you're going to see that they're in like sort of an L shape. So they're not only like corners, 
what's going to happen is this guys, for instance, are actually going to be going. Let's do a little bit of offset like there. So let's flatten them out. It's going to be like an L shape like that, right? Same thing here. Now, I don't really care that they're not symmetrical. Can we make them symmetrical? Yes, of course. Uh, but I think, you remember, we've, we've talked about this before. 3D tends to be really perfect. So when we don't make things like perfectly perfect, uh, we usually get like a nicer result. I actually do need like an extra line here. And I'm going to extrude this line like boom there. And this guy like there. And now we're just going to grab those two vertices. Merge to center, those two vertices, and merge to center. Now this one looks a little bit closer to uh, that one right there, which is looking good. If we need them to be a little bit thicker, no problem. We'll just grab this, guys, make them a little bit thicker. There we go. I'm actually going to reuse that one because I really liked how it turned out. So the only thing I need to do is just delete like this faces. And now this guy is uh, it's its own like little shape. I'm going to extrude, of course. That's going to give it a little bit of thickness, and that's going to also round it off. And uh, it, it is quite round. I might just add like one support edge or maybe not even a support edge, maybe just like a bevel on the outer like edges right here, which as you can see, we need to manually select because they are not an edge look, which we don't want them to be an edge look because we want to keep like those sharp round uh, corners. It's a little bit counterintuitive, but sometimes you don't want to have edge loops. Sometimes uh, having this sort of like construction is a little bit better. There we go. So let's just bevel. I am going to make the fraction a little bit bigger. And when we press number three, as you can see, we get this shape. Now, very important. This is a lesson that one of my uh, modeling teachers taught us. You never want to have something that changes very abruptly from uh, like number one and number three. So if you have like something that's really, really, really changing, give it a smooth. Like just give it a permanent smooth because this is going to be closer to the surface that you're actually looking for. And as you can see, the change now, it's a little bit less intense. And this is what we want. Like this is the shape that we want. Okay, so I'm going to keep it number three because that's what we're going to have on game or in game. And it's just a matter of bringing this back. Now, as you can see, this thing is not what we want. We want it to be like further out. So this is a matter of a center the pivot and just like pushing it or moving it so that it, it hovers over where we want. Now, I, I get a lot of questions with this thing that we're doing right now uh, with some of my students. They're like, do we really need, make, need to make sure that everything like like flows properly and everything or like, the, like hugs the surface properly? And the answer is overlaps are fine. People are, are a little bit scared about overlaps. They think that they're like, like the devil or something. And no, they're, they're not bad, especially in games. We use overlaps quite a bit where you don't want to have overlaps, though. That's on characters, for instance, like you want characters to be as watertight as possible, usually. So, for instance, here, I'm definitely noticing that this guy right here, like the, the little flaps, this this guys, uh, they go a little bit higher or like further out than I what I thought. So I'm just going to grab like all of these vertices and let's push them like really far out. They really cover the whole surface here. There we go. Same for this ones. So I'm gonna grab all of these guys right here and really push them back. You can see how how far they go. They go into the, the like the pillar here, and then this one right here stays kind of within the whole thing. So this guys, let's bring them back. Let me give it a little bit of like surface there, and there we go. Some other questions that usually come in my in my game asset class when I'm when I'm teaching like game construction is should we worry about like uh, uh, like the overlaps like, like I mentioned already right so can, can we have a lot of pieces that are just like overlapping and the answer is yes like again overlaps are not wrong as long as you are within like poly budget and as long as the asset looks cool you are gonna be wasting a little bit of texture. Uh, but not everything has to be watertight. So for instance, here, it's very easy to just control E and extrude this in, see? So we just pretty much deleted or, or uh, yeah, got rid of the, the other things. Now, do we need to keep that back face? I would, I personally would. I know that that's a little bit of extra texture, um, but I would because it is gonna help the, the overall shape. So I'm just gonna go here, mesh display, reverse, and there we go. Now, again, we can just to give it a little bit of a nicer effect, grab this line and just give it a bevel. Probably just one bevel should be more than enough in this case. And there we go. We have that nice little like support on the on the corner there. Now, let's um, let's add the little rivets, those little spheres that you see. You see four of them. Whenever you're doing spheres for games, the like one of the magic numbers is eight. So you're going to change the subdivisions to eight. And the reason why this is one of the magic numbers is because eight is one of the 
nicest uh, numbers that you're gonna get a nice like smooth display. So if you say, um, again, mesh display, soften edge, that looks okay. I mean, it's not perfect, but it looks okay. For something small like a ribbit, it should be fairly, fairly fine. So we're gonna position this, of course, right about there, which is that one right there. Probably a little bit smaller, there we go. And here is where I would be a little bit mindful about my uh, poly count, which means that I'm gonna be deleting the uh, backside of the, of the things. So grab this guy, and there we go. Just make sure that nothing is like floating, get it intersected there, a little bit smaller. Control D, and then this one's gonna be like right here. Same deal, like very important to, to really create the overlap because again, when we bake, when we create the bakes, I know that these things are gonna nicely create like a nice ambient occlusion and nice dirt on my on my elements. No need to be perfect. These were created by pirates or something. So even a little bit of like asymmetry is good. It gives this sort of like organic feel to the whole thing. There we go. Grab all of the pieces. Uh, combine, delay history, center pivot, first transformation. And here's where I would definitely, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, actually I'm gonna duplicate first, you're gonna see why in just a second. And then this one, we're gonna mirror in the C axis. So boom, we have the, the one on the back. And then we're gonna mirror on the X axis. Boom, we got that one on the back, perfect. And now this one, the reason why I duplicated this is because I'm gonna reuse it. So I'm gonna rotate this 180 degrees. Oh, there we go. And then we need to rotate this uh, like minus 90 degrees, which is gonna be like my lower corner here. So again, just snap it over there. And I don't wanna do a lot of extra work. I just wanna like reuse this as best as possible. So it's just a matter of trying and find how can we fit this into this section, right? So, so make sure that the overlaps are looking good. We need to like push them out a little bit and stuff because because the proportions are not going to be perfect, right? Because they're they're different inclinations and angles. Uh, so it's just a matter of, again, saying like, okay, you know what? Maybe oh. grab this guy. Let's go into vertex mode and very skillfully, we're just going to like move these things around just a little bit there. Same like here, you can see how this is not like really hugging the surface quite a bit or quite much. So just like push it so there's a little bit of overlap. Let's check this side, there we go. So pretty much the same deal. So grab all of these guys. Let's push them in. And we need to grab these guys and push them in. That's fine. And there we go, that looks good. Yep, I like it. Same deal, we're gonna go uh, X negative to get the, oh, oh, well, that's first transformations first, and then we're gonna go X negative. Oh, what the hell? Mirror, what does it say? We're getting an error here. Um, no object matches name, whatever it's looking for. Let's call this a corner. There we go. Huh, weird. Let's play history, first information, central pivot. That's really weird. Let's try again, mirror. Oh, that's really weird. No object matches name. Hmm. I'm not sure what it could be. Could be Maya messing up. You know how Maya is. <laughs> Sometimes it creates like problems for itself. Uh, let's try again. No, it doesn't seem to be working. Okay, I'm gonna show you the old school method of uh, mirroring things. So control G, control, um, and then control D on that group. Control D, why? Okay, so it seems like we crashed Maya. So uh, you guys know how to how to bring Maya back to its um, its default. Let me try again because I think I had the wrong tool selected. There we go. Yeah, I had the wrong tool selected. So C and there we go. Perfect. So now we have the four corners of our chest already. Nice. Now let's go back to the box right here and. Um, there's a couple of things that we can do for the wood. We can actually keep it like this. That's a perfectly valid option. Or if we want to, we could add at least the main group. So as you can see, there are two divisions here on the, on the wood panels. And at least adding do those two main groups will help with the with the overall shape of my, of my object. So I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go here. Let's add like one line over there and one line over there. Again, no need to be perfect. Grab these two guys. We're gonna bevel. 
Uh, now the question is, do we want to do it on both sides? And I think the answer is yes, right? Like if you were to see the, the chest from the inside, we'll probably like to see both like wood planks. So grab all of those guys, bevel, small fraction to create like the little group. And then we're going to select all of those little lines. There we go. There we go. And there we go. And uh, now it's just a matter of uh, extruding in and a little bit of offset. Very important. The offset is going to be super, super important because the offset is going to help us um, keep the, the normal maps cleaner. So there we go. And as you can see, that's looking pretty nice. So I'm I'm going to stop the video right here, guys. This is the first part. We are starting with the like the basic construction. Tomorrow, uh, I'm actually going to record everything uh like sequentially, so you're gonna see me with the same clots because I'm gonna try to keep the project in, in one in one go. Um, but tomorrow we're gonna be focusing on the cab right here, and we're probably gonna have enough time to like finish up most of the details, and then on the last day we're gonna work a little bit on the textures. Now, if this takes a couple of more days, let's see what we can do. Okay, so let us know in the comments what you uh, if you like this video, if you like this content, and uh, yeah, I I'll see you guys back tomorrow. But before I leave, let me do something very quickly that I think is going to help. I'm going to grab everything and I'm going to assign a new material here. It's going to be a uh, blend material. It's going to have a little bit of shine. Silly history. And I'm going to call this uh, wood. Oh. M underscore wood. And then I'm going to change the color to like a wood color. There we go. And then I'm going to grab the gold pieces so that we can already kind of like block in the colors of the objects. So assign new material, a blin, and let's add like this sort of like gold color. There we go. All the, it's a little bit yellowish. goes into like this there we go that's a little bit closer so yeah as you can see it's looking pretty nice uh we're in a we're in a good position this is the part one so stay tuned for tomorrow for part two if you're seeing this in the future then let us know what you think about the whole little uh mini project uh also remember let me know in the comments how you guys want me to texture this should i do it realistically or should we do it stylized it's a very it's a very interesting option but i think we can get some pretty cool results either way and also don't forget that uh, starting today, these submissions are open for this weekend's portfolio review. So if you want your portfolio to be featured in one of our videos and you want me to talk about it to give you some tips and tricks, uh, make sure to leave your portfolio down here in the Google link. Uh, create a new folder with your name and either drop the images there or drop me a link to your art station or your website or whatever you want me to review. Sometimes I've mentioned if you guys want me to actually go into the scenes and do a little bit of work on them, let like send the C tool, send the Maya files and if I can open them I can show you like a couple of like uh, on hands hands on deck uh, like solutions to, to some of the issues that you might face okay so yeah that's it for today guys it's been a pleasure I'll see you back tomorrow bye bye